So our server is working fine so far. Um, the only thing is, it's actually not saving anything. And we're using this global variable here, which I kind of don't like. So let's change things a little bit and make this somewhat of a better server. First of all, um, we also need to integrate storage, right? Persisting the value somewhere else outside of our server. Because if we shut down our count, which is producing number, shut down our server, bring it back our server, because there was some error, we would lose the value that we had. Like we wouldn't have any way to you know get back that last value. This should start failing here in a bit when we find that there is no server. And even if we bring up back our server, you'll see that we're going to be reading zero, which is not true. The last value that was actually written was 32,340. Um, 32, That's what it should be sending back, but because it's not persistent, it, that is why. So now let's go and fix two things, right? A slightly better server and also our persistence. The first one is to write a slightly better server. And so to me, a slightly better server is something that encapsulates um, whatever that endpoint is doing. So we should create a new type to represent our server. So we'll call this new type counter service. So type counter service is a struct. And of course, for now, since we haven't integrated storage yet, I'm going to move this last count variable into our struct like this and then we need to attach um you know our handlers to this struct right you know the get and all this other stuff and so what we can do is we can say that hey let's create a new service so count service com equals to new and that's counter service and what I would really like to be able to do is say come to service that router is equals to this router. So each of my services could potentially have their own router, right? For this example, it is not required, but I like to do that. So that means that oh, I should have something in here called router, and it's an HTTP router, pointed to HTTP router. So there we go. And the other thing is now this handler should be cs that post cs that get because again i don't want these to just be hanging out here by themselves as general function i want them to be tied to my counter service so counter service receiver so there you go let me copy this and put it here so essentially what i've done now is created a new type, attach these methods, these functions as methods. So now they are methods on this new type. And now my new type, so why is this complaining? Uh, expected identifier on the left of equal. Um, there we go. And then now with this new type, I can now encapsulate all the things that I need within there. And so here I can say CS that, you know, thing. Now, ideally, what you can do is wrap, you know, have a function called new router to create a new service, sorry, a new consume um, service. And that service now um, would take care of attaching these handlers to it. Okay. So, for example, I can have new, let's call it new consume counter service go here do that new function new counter service returns a new counter there we go and then let me see i still want this to be counter service that that guy router and then within my new counter service i create a i say it has a new router and then essentially that okay now there are many ways i can set this up but essentially that's it so i've hidden the details of how to create a new computer service with pm there and i could move this to a new package if i wanted to and i just return computer service so that's a nice thing about doing this is that now i've hidden this away 
If I want to share the router, I could make that a parameter that I pass into this function. But as a, those are all design decisions you can make. But at least I've cleaned up my main a little bit. And now I've hidden stuff away. And now since I'm passing in this counter service, now my, the last count is actually here. And then I'm getting it from here. And so with that little change, my function should continue to work again. So if I go back and I clean up here and I run this, I should be posting and soon I should see that new value here. And yes, it is working again. So I did not break my, my code. All right. And so just let me show you what the, all that code change, the change resulted in. I have a new type here called counter service. It has two fields right now, keeping track of the last count and the router. And I have a function that creates a new counter service. And this is what the function looks like. It you know, do all the configuration and returns that counter service value. And now my functions here that were handlers, there are methods on that counter service, but still they work to be, could have the match a signature. And so they can be used to register as, you know, um, for handlers. And so that's all there was to it. Okay. And then now I don't have a global variable because I'm passing this stuff in that encapsulated. So that's the first change, and that you can see is working in the background. Oh, I'm having a warning. Unable to encode value. Why not? Um, to encode counter. Okay. This is saying unable to encode counter value, but I'm getting it's, it's still working. So let's see. Oh, not unable. So if there's an error, if error not equals to nil, then I can I should print out that I'm unable to encode. So that was about if. So if there's no error encoding, then and you can see it's back to working. So my get calls are happening and they're successful. You see okay and that's good. All right. So last change now is to encode Reddit. Include Reddit. So for Reddit, if you go to GoDev and you search for Reddit, you'll see several packages. Now, the one I decided to use is this one called Redis version 8. Um, it has fewer users than this one, but never mind all that. Choose whichever one you feel like using. I'm just going to use this one. And so it's fairly easy to use also using Redis. And by the way, if you want to use Reddit, the Redis server, there are a couple of things you might want to do. You might want to download Redis and run it locally, or since we were playing with Docker in section 25, you should have Docker on your computer. So all we need to do is start our Docker server. And so we can do that by going to hub.docker.com. And if we search for Redis, you can see official, you click on that. And if you scroll down, it tells you how to run a Redis server, right? And so we can start a Redis instance. And that's all we really need to do. Um, run, now name is optional, it's up to you. Uh, minus D as a daemon, and then Redis is the container name. So let's do that. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to say Docker. And notice I have Docker already running. So Docker, Docker, run minus D. I don't care to give the name. And I'm going to say Redis. And it's going to be running. Now, the thing is, if that's running, and I do Docker PS, and you can see it's, it's running. Um, there's the Redis server running. Then that's the image. You give it this rather right, stupid name but it doesn't matter, it's been up four seconds, but I'm not gonna be able to access it. And we went over all of this with Docker before, and that's because um, there's a port that's being exposed by Redis that I'm not um, binding to on my local machine, right? Um, if I do Docker PS minus A, 
I can see that that port is, you know, it says um, port 6379, okay? And if you look, you'll see that there's this port, port 6379 that's being exposed by Redis, and I'm not binding to that port. So I would like to bind to that port. Now, one of the things I can do is if I say Docker, um, let's see, stop, um, and I can say 1021B, and that should stop it. Um, one of the advantages to giving it a name is that it's easier to stop things. So I can do stop Docker minus D minus name, and then let's call it my Redis. And if I do minus capital P, it means bind all the ports. And if I run this, um, do, 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 minus minus name, so minus minus name, minus minus name. And if I do Docker PS now, as you can see, on my local machine, it says that it's on port 55,000, yada, yada. And it gives it the name my Redis. Um, I don't want the port 55,000. Um, so I'm going to use the same 6379. So I'm going to specify a port. So again, Docker is this one last time. Docker um, stop and then do my Redis. And that's removed it. Now Docker PS minus A is going to show you I have two REST instances that are stop and still there. I still have to remove them. RM my underscore Docker, my Redis, sorry. Um, and then of course I have to remove the other one, which is 1021B. And if you don't want to have to deal with all of that. When you go to do this, do docker run minus minus r minus rm and then minus d for daemon minus minus name. I'll call it my redis. And what this means is when you stop it, it automatically remove it. I did all that before. And so the thing we want is the minus port. We want 6379 colon 6379, which means on my computer, map 6379 to the docker port 6379. And finally, the, con the image name, which is Redis. And so now, finally, if I do Docker PS, I should see that on my local machine, 6379 is mapped to the container, 6379. So that's why it's pointed that way. And of course, if I were to stop this, it would automatically remove it, so I don't have to worry cleaning up. So that's good. So now that that's up and running, let's go back to our code. And so cancel. And so what we want to be able to do is be able to um, now get our Redis address. If you remember, we said it's all we need a Redis address. And so we have var Redis address, and we can say local host by default, and the port number is 6379. Okay, that's the default um, address or URL, Redis URL. Let's use Redis URL. Yes, that's what I show in the intro URL. Okay, something like that. And we'll do the same thing here that we did before, which is to try and, and this is T is just a temporary variable here. So we weren't doing it, using it for anything. So I can say Redis URL. And then if it's empty, if it's not empty, then I sign it to my Redis URL. Okay. And of course, I don't need a new variable because I already have it. So I save that. So that would give me a Redis URL. Um, what I can do then is I can pass this into my new function, Redis URL. Now it's a global variable, but you know that's one of the advantages of doing a function like this is I could pass it in if I wanted to, but I'm not going to pass it in because it's global. So let's think about this for a second. In this, ex in this example, we're going to use Redis to store some data, but maybe we want the flexibility of being able to change it at some point. So why don't we create a package specifically for storing data? So I'm going to, but the only thing that needs to store data though is our server. So that I'm going to create within server, unlike our model, which we're going to share across the application, storage is just going to be for the server only so we're going to call it store because that's very creative and we call it redis.go 
because there's the one thing that we're gonna agree that we want to do right now and so we have package store that's the package name and we're gonna create some type and let's call it redis store and this is gonna implement our redis storage okay now let's ignore what goes inside right now this is just something that implements redis storage for us and from the point of view of our main is just going to create a new instance of this Redis store structure and then it's going to be able to use it. So what are some of the things we need? So we need a function to be able to create a new, you know, like Redis store, for example. And we have to maybe pass some params, some values in there, and we're going to return back a pointer to um, this type, right? And so let's do that. So our Redis store call it equals let's new do new. And so Redis store. Let's do that. And then we return Redis store. So that's 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 pretty straightforward. Um, like I said, one of the things that we might want to pass in here is our Redis URL. Let's just assume that somehow within here we can create um, something that connects to our Redis server, and now we're gonna store you know, a reference or whatever that is, a variable rather, that variable how to connect to our Redis server within the structure. And it's gonna be just like our um, counter um, service where we can now attach methods that we can then call, right? So we can say function um, for my Redis store, I need to be able to, not string, but rather I need to be able to, let's say, store a value. Right? or put the value let's see let's say put the value and maybe when you go to put a value you have to specify a key so this is where is it where does work you have to specify a key and the value and let's just say the value for all intents and purposes we can always make it a slice of bytes okay and then we're going to return error depending on if we can store it or not so we have something like this so that's going to allow us to put a value what about how do we get a value back from redis well since redis is a key value store well we should probably make it so that oh when we do get we just have to specify a key and it returns a slice of bytes and the error message. An error message if we couldn't get a key for that value. So let's do nil nil for now. Okay, so that seemed like a pretty straightforward and easy um, interface. Okay, so one of the things that we might want to be able to do is once we have a new Redis store, is to be able to check and see if it's actually working. So we're going to implement a ping function. Think of ping as we say, yep, this connection, I still have a connection, or I can read this Redis server. So let's do function. Again, we'll do Redis store. We'll do call it ping. And it simply returns an error message if we can't ping the Redis store. That's it, right? And so we're going to return no. So I, I, right now, I've just set up things. I haven't done anything really right and so at this point i sort of have enough that i can go back to main and then say well okay now that we want to um integrate storage i could come back here and say that oh let's have a or a database keep it abstract i don't know ah uh, yeah let's keep it abstract so database that store that redis store okay that's the type and let's do a pointer because we can create a new one. And so there we go. So this is our package. This is the type for the type of thing that we want to store. And we'll call it database. And so the advantage of that now is that in our new here, when we create a new counter service, we can also say database is equals to store that new Redis store. Now remember, we have to pass in the Redis store here, URL. That's fine. Um, like I said, we can do a ping to make sure that oh, 
we can successfully connect to that server. Now notice our function here, if we can't successfully connect to the Redis server, we can probably return nil. And of course, we will have to check all of that before we try and do a listen. So I don't want to complicate things, but I just want to show you some of the things we can do. So we can do, for example, um, cs.database.ping, all right? Or we can call our ping method and check the return value. But we're not going to really use it here. So um, let's do that. But I just kind of want to show you some of the things that you can do. All right, so let's go back now. Oh, um, we have to update these guys. So we have cs.database.put, right? And our put method calls for key. Um, let's just call this count, for example, or counter. This guy count. And that's the key we're going to use. We need to pass a slice of bytes. So do we get a slice of bytes? So let's get a buffer. And one of the things we can do is decode this, encode it to bytes. So why don't we just save a JSON value so that when we go to send it, we just read it back and send it to JSON. So we can say that's how we encode this back to JSON. So JSON that marshal and if we want to marshal the value C, it returns some bytes and slice. So we can say buff error colon equals. And if we got this far, we were able to decode it. I don't think we should have any problem encoding it. So actually, I'm going to for now use underscore say that I don't care and just store that. So I'm going to get some slice of bytes and store it. Now, you may say, well, why don't we just read these, um, this JSON document here and then just write those bytes? Well, that's because we want to make sure it's all we get something value. So we should try and decode it first. Now we can do other things. We can augment this type. What if this type had like a timestamp of when we created it? What if we had to put some permission on it? All those other things. So we could have done more things with this value with the, you know, our conk model here before we store it. So not because we just simply use it as it is, doesn't mean at all we don't have the possibility of putting other information on there, right? So that's an example. So anyway, so we store that. Um, again, I'm not going to check and see if we store it successfully. Well, actually I should. So let's, let's do that. I'm gonna check and see if we store it successfully. If there's an error, I should let no that are unable to save that decode on if the save value and bad request internal server so this is not bad request this is an internal server error and we can say unable to store unable to save value um, Try again later or some internal server error, try again later. So so we don't leak too much information about what is actually happening on the server. <laughs> All right, so now that's that. We gotta pick up the pace. Now in terms of sending back a new value, what we should do is we have to read it out of the database. Again, we can choose to have even more rich information in our database, but because we know that we just store in this simple JSON value that we can write back and send, why don't we just read that and send it out to, to the, the user? So I can say cs.database.get, and let's say we're using count, which is not the best key here because I'm using the actual string and that's gonna doesn't make it easy. We should have like a constant, but anyway. And I'm going to say buff and then error. And if we have an error, let's do it this way. If we have an error, unable to the internal server error.
try again later. We don't have to say why we couldn't provide the value, um, but we should definitely, oh, crap. Uh, oh. Um, actually, this is what we're gonna write to the user, right? Internal server error. And we're going to return and Let's see here. So I know you want to log it. Retrieve value from store from database. Yep, and what is the error for that? And then if we didn't have an error. Now we can actually write that to the user. FMT that F printf and then let's write bytes. So okay, so we can say w that write bytes and the bytes we want to write is buff. So we can say that. Okay, that seemed like a lot, but really and truly. It isn't as much as you think. What we did was we added a Redis URL. We tried to get that from the environment just in case it's different than the default. We updated our counter service so that our, instead of having a value store, it has a database. That database is going to be a tag that we're going to implement and hide the detail of how we store things to Redis. And so it's in our store package and it's a Redis store. Um, type and what we did was we updated our new um, constructor for counter service to create a new Redis store using the URL that we have at this point. And for the post, we make sure that though once we have a value, we just marshal it, get the bytes, and write it to our store and using the key count and it's just a set of bytes. And for retrieving a value, we try to get that value. And once we can get it, we write it to the user and we send it off. OK, so the only question now, um, now if we go back here, all this should not be working because even though we're sending a value, you can see that we don't have anything to return. We didn't connect to it. It's up and running, but we didn't connect to it. So our Redis is up. If we go to and we clean up here, or we Docker log and minus f is follow we can see that redis is up and listening for connection so that's good all right so let's go back and finish our redis um thing so when we say we have a new redis store how to create it but create it we need to connect to the redis server so the way you create a red connects to our redis server is use the redis package say redis that and you say option and you create this thing option value and you have to specify the address and then this is going to be our redis url then you have to say if there's a password but we are not using any password so that's going to be an empty string and then database and we're going to use the number zero so that's our option for connecting to redis and we're going to store this as you know redis database option let's call it or config redis database config and point it to that thing. then now we can try and actually connect to redis so we can say um, redis that new client and this is how you actually connect to redis and we pass this configuration. And at this point, new client is a function that would return, you know, so let's see, Redis version eight, okay. Let's um, take care of that by getting it so we can get some completion. So new client returns a Redis client, so Redis client, Redis client colon equal. So if you remember, what did we say? We say that our, our Redis store here 
we should store something that will allow us to use it later. So it's the Redis client that we want to store. So client and Redis client. So that's what we want to store. So I'm going to put inside of Redis store that client equals to client. Well, let's just call this client. You know, if we wanted to implement, now we at this point we should have a connection to a Redis server. We didn't verify it, but so if we try to implement ping, um, this should be RS. Um, if we try to implement ping, what we can do is say RS that client, and then we call the ping method, and we should see it says not enough parameters, like it expect a context. So we can say context that background just to give the context. And what does it return? It returns this Redis status command. Well, we can store that as CMD equals. And what we can do is then return CMD that error. And this would be whatever error that was returned for that command. So this now returns the error that we got from calling that ping command. So that was pretty easy for ping. What does storing a value look like for Redis? Well, for that, we're going to do RS that client. That's, that's our Redis client. And we're going to use the set. And so this will Redis use instead of put, it uses set. And so you can see we have a number of parameters here that we can use. So we have a context, we have the key as a string, the value is some interface of whatever type, and then expiration as in duration. So let's do this. Is just this slice of bytes. We don't have to worry thinking about anything else. And expiration time is going to be zero because we don't have any time expiration, like how long we want to take to store this. And once again, if we look at set, it returns a Redis status command. So we can do command that colon equals, and here we could return the error from that command by doing here and do error. And there we go. That's it. That tells us whether or not, whether or not we store a value. Get is pretty much the same. It's rs the client that get, and if we do a get, we'll see it's just context background and the key, and that's pretty much it. What do we return? It returns a string command instead of a status command. So we should save this command. Let's return. And now we can say uh, if cmd that error that command that equals to nil, then we should return cmd that bytes and you can see here the bytes and error so it returns if there was an error or not well instead of doing that since it returns error with when you try to get the bytes why don't we just return this value and done with it if there was an error it will return the error if it can't get the bytes and if there was a bytes and no error then that's it so we just return the two value that's returned by this. So we just sort of cheat a little bit. We don't check it ourselves. And that's it. So that is all there is to the integration with Redis. And so now let's see if um, this is working. So go get, let's see, log Ross failed to go. Let's see, what's the problem here? Um, imported. Oh, okay. So this is probably in. Um, here, let's see, we import something that we don't need. Let's see, log us. let's see, oh, there we go. And so we can easily fix that by doing tidy here, or we could have clicked get in the other place. So, okay, it looks like everybody's happy now. This is fixed. And now this should rebuild soon. That's because um, air doesn't detect changes in GoMod. I need to make the change in my main file, but there's nothing to change. So this is running now and notice how we call this and let's see, 095 
Um, so yeah, everything is working. Our code is back to working again, and we actually use it, Redis. How do I know that we're using Redis? Well, I'm going to start this. I'm going to stop our server like before. We should see an error here, and then there we go. I'm going to bring back up our server. Notice our oh, Redis is still running, and now look at that. The value we get is the Lavaz value that we store, and our count service is not running to store value, so we're just retrieving value from store, and that's exactly what we want it to behave. So our server is complete. It's actually persistent values. All right, so we got to hurry up now and write our count and our polar. So let's do that. 